Welcome to another episode of Practical with Miss Selena. Today we're going to do 2010 GCEO level practical. So let's begin the preparation and the execution. So let's start preparing. Let's move, remove the clutter. The clutter is removed. Let's go on. You are provided with a sample of solid X. Test it right in front of me. This is my solid X. It says here clearly that solid X is corrosive and should not be touched. Carry out the following experiment and test any gas evolved. Carefully record your observations. The volumes given below, unless referring to drops of solution, are approximate and should be estimated rather than measured. Dissolve the solid X in a large test tube in distilled water and then add more distilled water until the test tube is about two thirds full. Stopple and shake the test tube thoroughly. So over here, two thirds full. So let me use a marker and do a marking here. Stop of it, shake the test tube thoroughly. Solid X dissolve, giving a clear solution. Let me write down this observation first. Solid X dissolve, giving a orange solution. Let's move on. It says place about 4 cm of the solution from part A. So let me use a marker. This is part B. 4 cm cube, this is 2. Let me do an estimation of 4. 4 cm cube of part A in a clean test tube. To this test tube, add about 4 cm cube of sulfuric acid and another 4 cm cube of H2SO4. And let me take out my H2SO4 from here. And we're supposed to add three to four pieces of granulated zinc. Well, in my lab, because we do not have granulated zinc, but we do have zinc powder, so I'm gonna use zinc powder instead. Gently warm, but do not boil this mixture. Leave this test tube to stand in the test tube rack. Keep this mixture for use in part D and E. Proceed to part D when no further changes are observed in this test tube. While you're waiting, continue with part C. Well, let's move on to part C. Part C now. Let me label the test tube. Part C here says place about 2 cm cube of part A in a clean test tube and to this test tube add dilute hy sodium hydroxide solution drop wise with shaking until no further change is observed. So let me use sodium hydroxide. Right in front here. Now, when sodium hydroxide is used, we have to refer to the QA notes. QA note says that it is a test for cations. So I will see the color change from here. And it goes on to say place about 2 cm cube of solution from part A in a clean test tube for part 2. To this test tube, add 1 to 2 drops of solution Y. Solution Y is here. But this portion is C part 2. Two cm cube of part A. And add one to two drops of solution Y. So let me put it here. It goes on to say place two cm cube of solution from part A again. C part 3. Another two cm cube of part A in a clean test tube but now I add 5 to 10 drops of aqueous silver nitrate so let me put over here silver nitrate is here when silver nitrate is used let me refer also to the QA notes silver nitrate is actually a test for chloride if there's white PPT seed now I add aqueous ammonia drop wise. So ammonia is here, drop wise. Until no further change is observed, use a tea pipette, remove one to two cm cube of solution from part B. 
So over here, 1 to 2 cm cube part B, let me label part B here. And this is actually my part D, so that I know that from here I'm supposed to take from part B this portion. And it goes on to say to this test tube immediately add dilute sodium hydroxide solution dropwise with shaking until no further changes is observed. Carry on part E, but continue to observe this test tube for several minutes. Use a tip pipette. Now let's move on to part E. Part E says that we remove 1 to 2 cm cube again from part B into a clean test tube and to this test tube add 1 to 2 drops of solution Y. Well, it is a similar test from the previous part but yet still using solution Y. Let's move on to the conclusion. The conclusion here says consider the result of experiment in part B to E, give for conclusion and for observation, you are not expected to make any conclusion about solution Y. So we have finished the preparation.